So, <clears throat> I did some shopping today, and I came across something kind of interesting. Um, I don't want to say where I went shopping, don't want to get anyone in trouble. Um, probably just an oversight. Um, it happens all the time, especially at used game stores. Um, so basically, I bought Final Fantasy IX for the original PlayStation, and everything looks really, really good. Um, so we've got the instruction booklet, yeah, all that fun stuff. All the discs are there. You know, I have disc one in the PlayStation right now, so that's not in there. But, you know, disc three and four, whatever. Everything looks good, right? Well, <laughs> looks good until you flip the disc over. So, this is disc one here. Just pulled it out of the PlayStation. Flip it over. What color is that? That is silver. Um, original, you know, anyone who's played PS1 or PSX or whatever you want to call it, the original PlayStation, um, you should know by now that the kind of the signature that um, all official Sony games have, well, all officially licensed games for the Sony PlayStation have um, black dye on the bottom of the disc, so it's not silver like this. Um, see, I didn't know until after I opened the case and already bought it and everything. Um, this is my copy of Twisted Metal, complete with the black dye. Um, so we got our silver and our black. So what does this mean, basically? Um, basically what it means is that the one I bought is actually a professionally done um, bootleg from China. Um, now, the reason I'm letting people know about this, um, especially if you're collecting um, as an investment, like um, for for money reasons, like you're you're collecting these games, um, buying them, you see a good deal, whatever, um, you jump on it. Um, and you think, oh wow, I got this rare game for cheap or whatever. I did save a few bucks on this um, compared to the prices on eBay, but it wasn't too, too much. Um, so, whatever. There are also a lot of counterfeiters online that um, will sell these um, at full price, um, and you don't know until you get the disc in the mail. Um, so, let's say, for example, Kind of an extreme example let's say you have a game that is worth three hundred dollars i don't know super rare sega sat well not sega saturn it'd have to be playstation one in this case um super rare playstation one game we'll just call it x doesn't matter um and the seller you know that this is a really expensive really rare game and the seller lists it for 300 and you get the disc in the mail and it's silver and oftentimes with the silver ones, you'll find if you put it in your PlayStation, it will not play. Um, oddly enough, this one actually does boot without a boot disc or anything, but I haven't really tried getting into the game beyond the title screen um, without the boot disc because, I don't know, I just don't trust it. But um, most, so these come straight out of Hong Kong. Um, because in China, the IP laws are very lax. Um, so, you know, this is a crime in China, but it's only a civil offense. And um, from what I understand, bootlegging is common practice there. Um, from what I've heard, never been there, but from what I've heard, you can get bootlegs burned right to recordable media um, in shops all over the place. That's what I've heard. Never been there, can't, can't say. Um, and the government doesn't do a whole lot about it. So, because it generates a lot of tax revenue, so they kind of look the other way. Not to mention it's only a civil offense anyways. Now, 
All right, guys. Um, sorry for the interruption. So, um, had to answer the phone. So, anyways, bootlegging, from what I understand, is very common practice. Um, if you do some research online, um, you'll find this to be very, you know, disinformation all over the internet about it. But these usually originate out of Hong Kong. Um, they are professional looking, usually, I, although I've seen some YouTube videos of some people showing some that this art is just, the top disc is just brutalized. Um, but this one's done very, very well, and many of them are. Now, oddly enough, this one does boot, again, like I said, without a boot disc or a mod chip. However, a lot of them do not. Um, it's kind of hit or miss. It depends on how they made it. Um, so, a lot of the games, you know, well, the security information on the uh, PlayStation 1 games is actually physical errors that are actually pressed into the disc that the PlayStation checks for. There's a whole lot slew of information on this online, but just a quick overview. Um, that the PlayStation checks for, and, you know, if it detects that, the PlayStation says, hey, it's authentic, and it boots. Um, and mod chips and boot discs get around that. But anyways, so a lot of the Hong Kong silvers are actually, they're actually pressed professionally using similar equipment to what Sony and others would use, um, except it's usually missing those errors um, that it checks for. So my guess is this was probably spliced with a li uh, less expensive disc, um, which is another technique that's used. Um, it was used on Game Shark discs back in the day to get them to boot because they were unlicensed. It was used on, you know, um, all kinds of boot discs for the PS1, the PS2. Um, there is a very precise way they do it. Um, you cannot do it by hand, it's done by machine. Um, but they actually take, they take a less expensive game and they cut out that security portion and they actually, in a nutshell, glue it to their unofficial disc, which I'm guessing, I mean, usually you can't tell unless you scrape part of the disc label off um, wherever the splice was made to find it, which I'm not about to do because that will render this completely unbootable. But, you know, if this disc was junk, I would definitely scratch that off and try to find it to show you guys. So that's the only logical explanation I can think of was why it boots. They must be using that technique. But, um, anyhow, so I'm just warning you guys because, you know, like I said before, um, I think I kind of went off track a little bit. Um, so let's say you're buying that $500, uh, $300 game X. Um, you pay the $300 to the seller. You know, you're looking at this as an investment. You don't plan on playing the game. You just want to make sure it works and then keep it in mint condition um, to resell someday for hopefully more money. Um, you know, sit on it for another 20 years or so. You get a silver like this. It's pretty much not worth anything. Um, so I just want to make people aware. If you do buy something online or in a used game shop for the purpose of, you know, for a PS1 game, um, for the purpose of, you know, uh, investment, and you get a silver, you need to return it right away because it's worthless. Um, I'll show you guys here. Um, I'll show you, I did test it earlier and it does boot in the PlayStation um, directly. Which I find odd, but again, I think they use the disc splicing technique for that. Get the actual PlayStation there. It also boots with my boot disc as well. But, uh, most of these silvers will not boot without a chip or a boot disc or any of that sort of thing. So, 
but see it does boot. Um, you can also boot it with the swap disk I have. I'd like to see that. Um, which is how you would boot most of these silvers. Um, again, this one was really well done. So I have the PS Exchange 2 here. This works on only the original PlayStations, um, not the PS2. Um, but there are other products available for that. So I actually have my PlayStation open. So I have a spring in here. So I can swap the disc without the console knowing. So it stops. Can safely swap the disc. There's my silver. And it'll load. And then I can close that. That's fine. It doesn't need to remain open. But yeah, just interesting. Um, this one here, I just want to show you my boot disc too. This one was spliced very poorly. Um, oh, sorry. There's the game. Okay. So. This is completely unofficial product, not approved by Sony in any way, shape, or form. You can see they spliced this disc, but they did not do, you know, just to get it to boot as an unofficial disc, but they did not try at all to cover it up. Usually you have to scrape off, like I said, somewhere on the label side to find it and essentially ruin the disc. Here, hopefully you can see it. this one's silver too, it's unofficial, so they didn't bother to use the black dye. See that? that's adhesive from the splice um, but yeah so I just wanted to let people know what's going on um, so again if you plan on buying these games for investment purposes and you know you end up with a silver return it immediately and you know I just happened to pick this up I didn't realize till after the fact that I bought it you know I opened it up and I was like hey it's a silver okay and, you know, it is what it is, but, yeah, just wanted to let you guys know.